this is it. The CC850. The follow-up model of the CC8S, our first ever production car in 2002. So before I go into the details of the CC850, let me tell you the story about the CC8S. The CC8S, it was really a loved child created from blood, sweat and tears from a very little crew of people. I started Koenigsegg in 1994 and we built a few prototypes during the 90s. And in 1998 or so, we started development of the first production car, the CC8S. We showcased it for the first time to the world audience at the Paris Motor Show in the year 2000. We managed to get the most powerful output of a production engine with emission homologation in a homologated and crash tested car. At the, in 2002, that meant 655 horsepower was the world's most powerful production car. So things have moved on both for Koenigsegg and for the rest of the world since. But that, that car was really just a work of passion and love. I mean, on average, I think we were under 10 people developing that car. And it went on to set records and went on to become, from our perspective, iconic and really the epitome of Koenigsegg. It's easily recognizable. You can still see, I would say, the DNA from the CC8S through all the follow-on cars from there on. And if you look at a CC8S still today, in my mind, it still looks quite modern, kind of timeless. And when you look at it next to the CC850, which is really the continuation of the CC8S, but 20 years later celebrating the CC8S, we did not have to change much from a visual perspective to make it look super modern, sleek, and have the right aerodynamics and the right ergonomics features and functions. So that really puts the finger on how well the first car was executed by this very, very small team. The 50 comes from that we're making 50 of them. And it also happens to be my 50th birthday this year. So it kind of combines well with the celebration of 20 years of Koenigsegg, my 50th birthday and making 50 of these. It's a good low number for a very special, unique, hand-built limited edition car. As with the CC8S, we have, of course, the Koenigsegg doors. We have, as the CC8S, the detachable and stowable hardtop in the front. But as all modern Koenigseggs, of course, we have the auto skin. Everything is robotized. The chassis has different ride heights depending on, on your conditions and different stiffnesses of the suspension. We have active aero underneath the car. We have active rake and ride height. And we have integrated the top mounted, fully foldable, active rear wing that we pioneered on uh, the Regera. Of course, here it's adjusted for this shape and form. But we really wanted to have it foldable because the original CC8S, of course, did not have a wing. Um, technically, it had to move forward a lot, of course, because we have new emission regulations, we have new crash regulation, uh, and ergonomics f uh, fit and functions that are necessary to to stay viable. Um, but we really try to keep everything as similar as possible, but move it to 2022. And if you look in the interior, you will still recognize a lot of features and functions from previous Koenigseggs, like we now have the flag on the shifter knob, like the CC8S had, the Swedish flag. So now I said something, we actually have a manual in this car. We have a name for this manual that I can show here. We call it, well, for the whole car, actually, in a way, it's a TWMPAFMPC. So what does that stand for? The world's most powerful and fastest manual production car ever. And it is really difficult to make a manual car with today's regulation. But our customers really yearn 
for that analog feel. And we found a way with our latest technology to manualize our light speed transmission. And I mean, it's really manualized in the sense that your clutch movement from your foot directly actuates the hydraulics for the clutch progressively with your foot movement, exactly like a traditional manual car. And the shifter mechanism, which is connected also to the clutch pedal, is also in direct connection with the transmission from all the moving parts and all the movements inside. They are synchronized. We do not have the ability to shift in the LSD, but we have the ability to communicate directly so it becomes exactly like a normal manual. You can feel the force feedback from the transmission in your foot and in your uh, shifter. So that is completely unique. Given the fact that we have nine gears in the LST transmission, and that's of course quite a lot to have in a manual uh, uh, shifting mechanism. So we decided that you have six gears going forward and one reverse. But given that we have nine gears to play with, you have different gear ratios for a track setting and different gear ratios for a road setting, which is also a world's first and really brings the manual beyond the other compromises that you otherwise have to have. So this is a view of the Koenigsegg Engage Shift System, the KESS for short. We really put in a huge effort into this mechanism to make sure you get the proper feel of a fantastic manual. Not too heavy, not too light, the force feedback you need to feel the gears engaging, and the connection to the clutch pedal, which means that you cannot take out the gears unless you also clutch and the interaction in between there. And, and that is fully integrated with everything that's going on in the transmission. So you can feel the gear shift engaging in your controls like a normal manual. That was a huge undertaking and we're so proud of it. And it means we can save the manual for the future. So when you're in automatic mode, you have that super smooth shifting that you expect from a modern automatic uh, transmission. But when you're in manual mode, you have that direct, hard-hitting sensation of a manual. And the clutch works just like a normal car. What, your movement directly relates to the pressure on the clutches in the transmission. So you can drive away really smoothly if you're a good driver or a normal driver. And if, if, if you lift off the clutch, the car will just jump and stall. It's a manual, there is no difference. It just features and functions like a proper normal manual. And we're super excited by that. But let's look at a little bit on the performance and the stats of the car. So it actually has a little bit less power than its siblings, the Yesco Absolute and the Yesco Attack. And why is that? I mean, the engine is pretty similar and the transmission is pretty similar, but we put smaller turbos on the engine to make sure we have virtually absolutely zero turbo lag. Because when you're driving a manual and maybe you have one hand on the steering wheel, you don't want to have a sudden surge of extra power. Not that we have a lot of turbo lag in the Escos, but we wanted to make sure we had absolutely zero here. So still the performance and power is immense, of course. Uh, it actually has more than double the power of the original CC8S. Um, and the weight is not that much, I would say. Um, and of course, we encourage everyone to run on biofuel, E85. It's better for the performance, it's better for the engine, but it's also better for the environment. There are many new ways of uh, producing ethanol that makes it better for the environment than, than in old days. But they're also coming very exciting new fuels with uh, solar fuel and uh, synthetic fuels that you can mix in together with the petrol or the 85. We care very much about the environment, but it's also exciting to keep the animal alive with a combustion engine in this low volume. And as the car is lighter and not driven so much, and we don't have to take so much raw material out of the ground, we actually know that this is as environmentally friendly as an electric, especially if you don't drive as much as a normal car and you can drive on biofuel. So we really want to put that forward that that is important to us. 
But yeah, so we have the two Yescos behind here. Um, and uh, they're really kind of the, the fan bearer uh, for the technology for this car. But we did a lot different. I mean, the suspension is diff differently sprung. The interior is quite different. Actually, the whole glass area is different as well. It is a little bit lower, like the previous Koenigseggs, to really capture that CC8S vibe. So it's very much a car on its own, but it rests on the laurels of the Jesco development. And uh, that is what I have uh, for you guys today. I hope you enjoy, and uh, I hope you get to see more of this uh, creation that we're so proud of. So happy anniversary, everyone. Okay, guys, of course, I also need to show you the interior, um, and especially the ESS. So we made the shift knob out of wood to have a really tactile human feel to it actually enhancing the analog feel. The Swedish flag on top is something we had in the CC8S as well on our first production car. So it's a homage to that manual shifter. And then we're really celebrating the mechanical mechanism which you can see through the gated uh, shifter grid. It's very exciting. Clutch is very natural feel with a hump, like a traditional clutch with the right uh, resistance. Not too heavy, of course, but this is really where it shines. So here we have the six gates forward. Then we have this side where we have reverse, neutral, and drive, nine speed, automatic. And you can jump out of that and you can jump into another gear. Of course, we restrict it from jumping into a too low gear if you're here, but otherwise you can just jump in and out. So it's very easy to operate, very tactile. Very nice feedback, very exciting. The steering wheel is completely round. Again, going back to that really analog feel, uh, like more of an old school sports car together with the analog Chrono Cluster 2 instrument, which is just a beautiful piece of handmade machine parts put together like a Swiss watch. Very exciting.